I am really curious about how you handle any loans that you've done on your own like that. People are afraid. What happens if I have to take it back? What happens if I lose money? Has that happened to you? And how did you handle it? You're starting to sound like my wife now. <laughs> Donna and yeah. I are tight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you you know Donna real real well. Actually, um, we don't do a transaction uh, alone unless we do talk uh, about it. And you know that's always the question. Well, what if they don't pay? Mm. A properly underwritten loan. If it doesn't pay and you end up getting the property back either through, through them deeding it back to you or through a foreclosure action, you should come out whole or okay. And yes, I've had, uh, I've had multiple transactions that have gone backwards over the mm -hmm. years. And some of those we've made money on, some we've broke even and some we've lost on. And with all types of investing, you cannot be willing to make the gain if you're not willing to take some of the loss. And you just have to be right most of the time. You're not gonna be right all the time. And you mitigate your risk by not putting all of your eggs in one basket. You spread the risk on as many transactions as you can. And you know, your underwriting is probably along the same lines as mine. Uh, we're looking to be into a, an investment at no more than 65 or 70% of its after repair value. So if you do get a uh, property back, then you still should be in, in the property back of what its actual value is. When you say you've lost money uh, in some deals, can you give us kind of a round percentage of what that investment might have been that you lost? I mean, you, you lose it in the stock market, it's bye-bye forever. You right. lose it on real estate. What What is a common percentage on something that you may have lost funds on? Uh, the most we lost on one was probably 40%. Yeah. And it was a, we just got duped uh, by a repeat person, however. Wow. Uh, but we got duped by this person and yet, uh, you know, you learn from it and you moved on uh, uh, from there. Another one early in my lending experience, uh, very early on, one of the very first people that we loaned money to, we ended up getting the property back. Uh, but the, the real problem with the transaction was our paperwork was bad. We got, oh. bad, we got a bad note. Uh, from our attorney that closed the transaction. And wow. We collected on their insurance, malpractice insurance, uh, for part of the shortage. And so we that's the one we broke even on. So from then, I hired uh, John Heyer uh, to write a note uh, for me for what we were attempting to accomplish. And at that point in time, I was doing equity participation loans. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking John about that. Uh, at a conference 10 or 12 years ago. And he said, that is an intriguing idea. Send me what you're trying to do. He investigated it, did the research, wrote the note, and then sent me the bill for writing that note. And then since then, you know, on his uh, trails around the country, he sold that idea and sold that note hundreds of times. Uh, <laughs> You didn't make any money off that tra those transactions. Though, I did no commission. Get the residual check. Um, <laughs> but I did well enough on the notes that we participated in over the years. We've built houses with builders around Charlotte, you know, with equity participation notes That's and just awesome. shared in the equity. Win, lose, or draw. All right. So if you're willing to make it, you've got to be willing to lose it. And That's right. so when you do equity participation, it's win, lose, or draw.